Hey all, welcome to The Sim Hang-On, my name's Mark, thanks for watching. Many Xbox users may be wondering when or if VR, virtual reality, is coming to the Xbox, particularly in light of the recent announcement by Xbox's main competitor, PlayStation, of their second generation VR headset, the PSVR 2. And both the headset and controllers come with a commendable set of specifications. Phil Spencer, the CEO of Microsoft Gaming, has been fairly consistent and adamant in the past that virtual reality for the Xbox is not part of the short, medium or even long-term plans. There's been a number of acquisitions, significant ones by Microsoft, as well as a number of other developments. So it now raises the question, is it time now for Microsoft to take VR on consoles seriously? Let's take a look. To put things in the right context, we need to understand how successful Game Pass has been for Microsoft. It's been a huge success for both Xbox and PC. In a nutshell, for a monthly subscription gives you access to hundreds of games, including AAA titles. These are then either downloaded, streamed or a combination of both. You can then load up games to your heart's content, providing you've got an active subscription and space on your hard drive. And it also gives you access to multiplayer function. And it's this success in part as being one of the drivers for Microsoft taking over and acquiring Activision and Blizzard. For what I understand is the mind-boggling sum of 68.7 billion US dollars. Ouch! And this will enable them to bring Call of Duty franchise, etc. to the Xbox. Another success story for Microsoft has been the re-entry or reintroduction of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So much so that it's the Microsoft Game of the Year. Jörg Newman, who heads up Microsoft Flight Simulator on behalf of Microsoft, recently had the following to say. Awesome engagement. Uh, that's all I can say. We are breaking records. Uh, November and December have seen some of the highest uh, engagement numbers ever on any flight simulator. Um, and January is off to an amazing start. Um, we, we will likely exceed December, which is, which is awesome. We added hundreds of thousands of uh, newcomers to a growing base of simmers. And uh, what's really interesting is now, we now have almost twice as many uh, people simming as we did in the middle of 2021. So it's, it's quite something. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy. The growth that Jörg Newman is talking about is not just console-based, but PC as well, of course. But what's interesting is the growth of Microsoft Flight Simulator on PC is also growing VR usage. Navigraph conduct an annual survey of the flight sim market and Andy Goodholm, the community manager for Navigraph, had the following to report. Just looking at the number of users who own a VR headset now, it's been sitting at about 20% during 2019 and 2020. But now we see that almost 25% of the community owns a VR headset and about 15% of the respondents own a VR headset and use it for flight simulation. The one question, of course, is whether or not the Xbox got enough grunt to run VR. There may be some questions regarding the Xbox Series S, but on paper, the Xbox Series X is more powerful than the PS5. So the answer would appear to be yes. Sony PlayStation's PSVR 2 is likely to retail for something in the region of about 399 US dollars. Obviously, that's subject to confirmation. And Microsoft, just like Sony, is unlikely to make any money. In fact, probably make a loss on the hardware. It's on the sale of the software or the games where they make their money. And this may account for some reluctance on the part of Microsoft in terms of venturing into the hardware market in the VR space. The main argument from Microsoft at this point is that VR is not yet mainstream. And at times for VR sim heads such as myself, that's hard to accept. If we take a look at Steam, for example, on the top menu, if you click on store and then at the bottom there, you'll see stats. And this will show you the number of Steam users in the last 48 hours. It's a considerable figure and it's peaked at around about 28-29 million. It's hard to establish how many Steam users there are overall, but I think it's in the region of about 120 million. We can gain further insight by clicking on the Help option from the top menus and then select System Information. 
and it'll come up with some details on your system. Right at the bottom is an option to compare your stats with other Steam users. If you click on that, well, it opens up a whole range of very interesting information that's available for you to have a look at. Here you can see such things as different graphic card usage, as well as which processors are most popular. Here we can see that the Intel CPUs are around about 70% of the market at the moment. But what we're interested in is the VR. If we go down to the schedule below and click on VR headsets, we can access more information. And here we can see for Steam users, which is probably representative of the community anyway, the Oculus Quest 2 is by far the most popular headset. But the main point that we're interested in is the very bottom figure. These are January 2022 stats, and it indicates that 2.14% of all Steam users use a VR headset. But the real question is, for how long can Microsoft sit on the sidelines whilst their main competitor, Sony, jumps on the bandwagon and captures that market, and by its very nature, will attract the VR titles? When Valve launched the Valve Index headset, they were looking to increase the VR usage and take up overall, and so they released Half-Life Alex. This strategy certainly served to boost index sales, they quite quickly captured a sizable share of the market, but did little to increase VR usage overall. Valve were trying to create the killer app for VR. Now whether Microsoft Flight Simulator is the killer app for VR, well I don't know. That's not really for me to say. But it is one that is successful and it is driving an increase in VR. And it's not as though Microsoft are not in the AR VR space already. Software-wise, of course, it's Windows Mixed Reality. And there's also Microsoft Mesh, which allows collaborative working using a combination of AR and VR with a HoloLens too. In addition, they were part of the partnership with Valve and HP in the development of the HP Reverb G2, a headset that's optimized for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Technology continues to move at pace, both in terms of hardware compute capability and as wider bandwidths become the norm, streaming from the cloud. It's my personal opinion that Microsoft will do everything they can to protect their gaming platform. It's now a significant revenue stream. And if VR only accounts for 2, 3 or 4% of users at the moment, that will grow rapidly with the advances in technology and the reduction in the price of the hardware required. And it's not only in gaming or simulation where VR will find its place. Training and learning will become an integral part in the future. Can we expect VR on the Xbox in the next week, month? Well, no, we can't. But it's now something Microsoft needs to pay attention to. There's a big and growing market out there. And of course, Microsoft have the option not to do VR themselves. They can do it in collaboration with a partner, something they've done before. What are your views on VR for the Xbox? I'd love to know. Please comment below. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this interesting and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you again soon. And bye for now.